May 12th, 2021, was a very long day. It was a Wednesday, and we continued our journey from Columbus, Ohio to Willow, Alaska, by setting out from the Yakima River in Washington, where we had rested for two days. We had been waiting for our COVID tests to come back and relished the rest in this beautiful place. Our test results came in at 11 p.m. Tuesday night, so Wednesday morning we headed on through Seattle, then Bellingham, where we had the most expensive Panda Express we ever had, and with full tummies and even heavier hearts, made our way to the U.S.-Canadian border, arriving at 4 p.m. Washington time. I had studied the Canadian border crossing website to plan our trip through Canada and had planned to stop to pick up a Walmart curbside order first, then to stop at truck stops to rest and refuel over the course of five days, per the website. What we found when we arrived was something entirely unexpected. We were the fifth car in line when we arrived, but we waited six hours before it was our turn. When we went inside, we learned that all of my plans were pretty much for nothing and that the Canadian police required that I make hotel arrangements through a list of specified hotels, despite having the RV. The most difficult part of the new realizations was that they were not giving us five days, they were giving us three. The rest of the story, I'll let Barb of the past tell it as it happened. The following are messages to worried family members at home. So it's been a pretty awful day. After a full day of driving, we've been in the process of crossing the border for 10 hours now, and it's been brutal. We waited in line for six hours, and there were only five cars ahead of us. Customs rifled through the entire RV and removed most of the contents from the truck. Jordan had to repack the storage containers and load them back into the truck himself. During this time, the puppies were locked in a kennel outside the customs doors, and Beans was in our carrier in our bedroom. I was inside customs frantically trying to make hotel reservations for all three nights, including tonight, that's almost over, but a lot of the phone lines are down along the route to Alaska. I can't get through to most hotels. If I can't make arrangements, we'll have to start all over with new COVID tests on the U.S. side and get back in line to start the whole thing over again in a couple of days. By the time they let us through, we were all dehydrated and in rough shape, every last one of us. We're about to be allowed to proceed, but there are some pretty stringent requirements. We are still required to get an approved hotel, which is five hours away, in order to be allowed to enter. We have had to book hotel rooms on the approved quarantine list for each night so they can follow up on where we are. We are only allowed until Saturday to reach Alaska. So Jordan and I will be driving in shifts in order to make our destinations on time. If we are not where we are supposed to be when we're supposed to be there, they will hunt us down. The hotels report to the Canadian police that we've checked in at each destination. If we don't, they will impound our vehicles and ship them to the nearest U.S. port at our expense, fine us $3,200 a piece, and deport us after possibly doing time in a Canadian prison. Therefore, we will essentially be unavailable for the next three days, Thursday through Saturday, as we hightail it out of Canadian Dodge.
was mountainous, but I don't think it was this. It was, uh, Wi-Fi. Real quick, we're trying to submit our at-home test kits. We have to register ourselves, our kits, and swab ourselves on webcam with a nurse. Then return the swabs via shipping. We're having a lot of internet trouble. We stayed in the parking lot of a Ramada Inn and paid $81 for four hours in the lot and they're vouching to the authorities that we were where we were supposed to be. We arrived there at almost 10 a.m. Eastern Time and we were up four hours later to take COVID tests and roll out. Last night, both dogs and Bean slept on top of me, all traumatized. We had been in the truck going to or through customs and up to get to our first stop eight hours later from 9 a.m. Eastern Time Wednesday morning until 10 a.m. Eastern Time Thursday. We are required to arrive at our next destination 21 hours away by tonight. We'll drive in shifts. Whoever isn't driving is sleeping. Until COVID restrictions are over, do not enter Canada to go to or from Alaska or the lower 48. If we can get an internet signal tomorrow morning, we'll let you know we're okay. For those of you who are tracking our bubble through Google Maps, please help keep everyone here informed on our progress as much as you can. This would help us a lot.
state it's better exhaustion despite the you know, it's not in the spirit of the you know, sightseeing <laughs> there are just some moments that you can't avoid uh -huh. trying to capture We should arrive in Alaska tomorrow evening, and when we do, we'll find the first place we can pull over and sleep all day Sunday. Slow down to 70. Uh -huh. I don't know what the speed limit is, but we're, we're averaging 30.
outside of Seattle. But we just walked, drove from Washington to Alaska oh, just across the border in three days. We uh, had to pay for two hotels just to stay in the parking lot as required by Canadian law as a check-in. And um, I have no idea what's outside. Go take, come take a look with me because we pulled in the first spot that we could last night and we have no idea what it looks like outside. So come take a look with me. Are you ready for this? Alaska. It has never had more meaning than now. That was an incredibly hellish three days. Welcome to Alaska. Thank <laughs> you. 